In this video, we're going to create the C Sharp class environment var that's going to have two properties and it'll be exposed to the galaxy for uh, obtaining the uh, environment variables that we're after. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start up Visual Studio Express that we that we installed in our previous section. And we're going to go to this project. So here we have the class that was created previously. And the first thing, this, this is a very simple class and what it's going to have is two um, read-only properties. It's going to have a read-only property called computer name and a read-only property called username that will um, expose the computer name and the username when called. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a private internal and we'll denote it it's a string. Let's call it, and we're going to denote it as an internal with an underscore in front of it and we'll use camel case which means lower class first and then uppercase for the next um, part of the syllable. And then we're going to set it to an empty string to initialize it but we're not going to put anything in it. Alright so there's our there's our private string variable that's internal only to this class and that no other object will be able to see it. So it's completely encapsulated. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our property and our property is going to be public. We're going to expose it. And it's going to be the same name without the underscore. And we'll go ahead and put curly brackets on it so that we know the order and the structure of how it's supposed to be. Now it's giving me an error and if I browse over that the I see that red line that means there's an error so I scroll over it and it tells me property or indexer must have at least one accessor. And the accessor is how you get and set the property. So get a get accessor is returns a value. So whenever you um, access this later, that's what's going to determine whether it's read or written. So a get accessor means it's a read. You're going to read the property, and a set accessor means you're going to put a value into the property. So because we're only making read-only properties, we're just going to use the get accessor. And in the get accessor, this is where we're actually going to assign the value that's going to be returned. So we're going to type a return. And what this property is going to return is the computer name. So we'll put our internal variable, computer name. And then we're going to set it using environment. And this is literally the same thing we did in Orchestra in the same way. You might say, well, you know, this is an awful lot of work just to do the same thing you can do with two lines of code in Orchestra. That is true. However, when you start working with more complicated code blocks, like what's needed to communicate with web services or to read and write XML files or to do FTP transfers or to... Uh, send emails or anything that's going to require co a fairly substantial amount of code becomes very complicated in a hurry inside of Orchestra using native scripting. And what you wind up with these huge ugly code blocks that are difficult to manage or change or troubleshoot. And what you find is that inside of inside of Visual Studio you can manage all this code you have built-in debugging tools and I'll show you those in a minute how you can step through this code and, and test it 
and it just so it provides a more robust means to do this to do things. So this particular example may not be a really good example of the advantages of using custom script libraries, but it definitely shows you the operational functionality of it and how it works. Now that we've created our first private internal for the computer name and our first property, which is a read-only, the only other thing we need to do now is create our second group. And I'm going to be lazy here and do a copy-paste. And we're going to change this one to um, username. And all we got to do then is change the environment dot field. The beautiful thing about see if you hit the dot, what the dot or the period after the environment. What it does is it automatically create, tells IntelliSense to pull up what's available. So these are all the things that are available at the end of that um, class, at the end of this little library, the environment library. So I know I can pull up, so I'll go ahead and pick username. There it is. And that's, that's it. We're done. So let's save it. And then compile it. And there we go. Now what it's done is if you go and look in your documents folder, Visual Studio, Projects, Environment VAR, into the binary, into the debug. All right, so there's our DLL. That is the product that we have, the output that we've produced through this process. And that's what we're going to actually use to import into the Galaxy to create the script function library. And what I was telling you before, I'm going to do a little debug here. So let's let's just put in a breakpoint right here and run this code. And I can hit start. Ah, excuse me. No, I can't. So because it's a class, it's not an executable. It's not going to be able to run. So what you have to do then is you have to create a second project for testing. So let's do that. So the testing, the test frame, we'll go over here. We'll go back. Pull up. We're going to pull up another, another instance of Visual Studio. Create a new project. And this project, let's call it a, uh, let's make it a Windows, a console application. So this is going to be a little executable that we can run to test. And we're going to call this test. ENV VAR. All right, hit OK. All right, so now in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to add the reference. We're going to add our DLL as a reference. So essentially, this is going to this is putting it in the same place as the Galaxy. So let's browse to where the DLL is located. All right, so we have we've inserted our environment var. So now we need to go ahead and reference it. If you see here now, environment var is is, is available as a library. So we're going to insert it there, and then we can come down into our to the main part of our program that we're creating for testing, and we can reference it. So let's just do a simple um, right line. Well, first let's instantiate this object. So this is going to be in var. Here's our class. I'm going to call it ev new in var. What this does is it instant it creates an object from the class in var. So now, if we go to EV, you can see computer name and username. These are the two properties that we exposed. Okay, so now let's do a console write line. And we're going to say this is the computer name EV 
dot computer name. Whoops. Okay. This is the username. All right, so with this, <clears throat> whenever we run this, we'll see um, we'll see on the console line these two things. And another thing, I'm, I'm gonna put a console read there just so it'll pause. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so there's this is a computer name, there's my computer name, and there's my username. So it did work. Now let's step it through. So to show you how the code works and how it the using the debugging features to step through the program, you can actually see this thing how it's going to uh, scan. So what we're going to do is we're going to go debug step into and it stops at the first line of execution. F11 will step this thing. So you see the first thing it does is it goes in here and assigns the class, creates the object. Then it runs over to the class document and starts stepping us through there. And the first thing you see is it stepped right through there, but if you notice now under the property name, it's got the name of the PC for the computer name. And then as soon as we do our um, next step, Now we'll run to this and if we look in the there's our there's our code where it's actually showing this is a computer name this is what was brought back from the DLL and again this so now whenever we import this so we've tested it we've analyzed it we know it's going to work so now literally all we have to do is import the DLL Let's pull up the Galaxy. And Galaxy import script function library. Visual Studio 2015 projects. Implement variable. There's the DLL. Just click on it, hit open. Import script function library, the import of environment variable DLL succeeded. And so now if you want to, you can actually export that script function library. There it is. Just hit OK. And what you'll find is that you now have um, created, let's see where we went to with that. So I believe I put it right back in the same place. So we'll go, let's go back and look in our project. Yep, look at there. So it created an AASLIB file, and that's what your script function library looks like after it's exported. Okay, so well, let's let's just review quickly what we did here. We went into the C sharp uh, or the mic we went into the Microsoft Visual Studio we edited our class document we um, created two properties two read-only properties computer name and username compiled it tested it imported the DLL and exported the DLL And this completes this, this video.